Welcome, students, to Understanding the Bible with Ms. Tracy. Before you begin this year, you're going to make sure that we have the following things. You're going to need your Bible overview book. This will be the hardback copy that you'll retrieve from Miss Laura. You're also going to need a large spiral notebook for journaling, and you're going to need a Bible. Now, the New International Version is what we are going to be reading from and what is preferred. But if you don't have the New International Version, it's okay. Read the one you have. The best Bible that you can read is the one that you actually read. So let's go over some class rules and objectives. First of all, class rules. Um, be kind and respectful. And by that, I mean when someone is speaking, be it a teacher or a student, we are going to look at them, we are going to be quiet, and we are going to listen and pay attention to what they have to say and take them seriously. Secondly, there are no silly questions. Um, if you have a question in class and you want to ask it, raise your hand. Be respectful of whoever is talking and don't talk over them to ask your question. Raise your hand, ask your question, and we will answer it as well as we possibly can. And if I can't answer it in class, then I will get back to you with it. Secondly, the objectives. My primary objective is to turn this Bible reading assignment, um, to turn it from a something you have to do for class, uh, a, a, a discipline into a habit um, and turn that habit into a joy. And the way we're going to do that is through methodology. We're going to read every single day. Yes, even on Saturday and Sunday. That is how we're going to turn it from an assignment into a habit, into a joy. I'm also going to help you find tools to study that fit you best and that fit you best right now, but also will help you grow as your Bible reading skills develop. The more you read, the better you get at it. And the other objective, the final objective, is to help you understand the meta narrative of the Bible. And that just means the overarching story of what happens and why you need to know it and why it's important. So let's talk about our Bible overview book. Within this book, you'll see a lot of information. Um, I say a lot, but it's only a few pages on each book of the Bible. And we will read this before we begin a new book. It's got outlines, timelines, maps, who wrote the book, what the time frame was that they wrote it in, and other information that's helping you going to understand how the Bible fits into history. It also has like sidebar information of archaeological digs and things that were found by archaeologists that support what is taught or what you read in that book of the Bible. So if you don't have a Bible, don't buy a new one, unless you really want a new one, then go for it. Um, but you do not have to buy a new Bible, read what you have. And if you don't have the New International Version and you just want it so that you can read the same thing everybody else is reading, there's a great way to get a free copy of it. Our church, the church I go to, Hernando Baptist Church, um, has an app and the app has seven or eight different versions in of the Bible in the app. All you have to do is click on the drop down menu and then it will, um, you can select which version you want to read. Now, if you download the app to your device and you look across the bottom, there are several icons, four or five icons, and one of them is the Bible. And you tap that icon and it opens up the Bible. Now, the great thing about this app is that not only can you read the Bible yourself, but it will read the Bible to you. It has voice actors that really make the Bible stories come alive and it's super engaging. It helps you also learn how to pronounce biblical words and names because it reads it for you. So as you're reading along, as it's reading it to you, then you hear the correct pronunciation and you're able to um, have more confidence when you have to read the Bible out loud. You can also read along as you listen or listen as you drive. I personally like to listen as I am um, reading in my Bible because it helps me to identify the words correctly. But 
I can also do this while I'm driving down the road. I can listen to my Bible as I'm putting on my makeup in the morning or fixing my hair. Um, so there's there's a great application to having an app that will read it to you. If you are not a strong reader, if you have dyslexia or you just struggle with the difficult language of the Bible, having it read to you as you read along with it will really help you understand what's going on and gain confidence in reading the Bible. So let's talk about that notebook. It needs to be a thick five subject spiral bound notebook. Yes, you can use a cute little pretty journal if you want to, but you're going to need a lot of them. We are going to do a fair amount of writing and journaling. Um, You are going to have a journal assignment every day. And by every day, I mean every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Maybe not on every Thursday, some Thursdays, but seven days a week, you will have some type of journaling assignment. Can you get around that? Maybe do Saturday and Sunday on Friday? Sure. Can you do Thursday's reading passage on Wednesday night? Sure. Um, But you will have an assignment every day and you will have to write something in your journal for every day of the week. Now, if you are somebody who does not like to um, ask the questions that you might have. That's one of the things that your notebook is for. It is to take down or write down questions that you might have about a passage that you want an answer for. Um, and that's that's what we're here for is to answer those questions. So also write any questions that you want answers for in your notebook so you can bring them to class. It's one of the reasons why you need to bring your notebook to class every Thursday. If you have questions, but you don't want to raise your hand and ask them. It's okay to be shy. Um, There will not be any points deducted for not raising your hand and speaking. I don't do that. Instead, I have index cards on the table and you can take an index card, write your question on that and put it in the basket and we'll answer those questions as we can. So if it's a question you want the answer to, but you're shy about asking it, it's okay. We'll take care of you on that. One of the tools we're going to be using for each Bible passage that we're going to be reading is the Bible recap. Now, this used to just be a podcast and it's a really good podcast, but she has turned it into a YouTube video, which really helps us this year because I can link it into a Juno pod. The author is Tara Lee Cobble. She is a Bible scholar. She has been studying the Bible for almost a decade and a half. She has um, not just her, but she has, has, studied with other theologians and professors, seminaries, and she has even walked in the footsteps of the people in the Bible several times, mapping out their journeys. And she knows what she's talking about when it comes to the area and the regions of the Bible and um, what those things are in reference to. There are a lot of things that the Bible references that you have to know the lay of the land to understand what it means or what it's referring to. And she can do that for us. She has a very good idea, uh, a way of taking the main idea and putting it into everyday language. Sometimes the words of the Bible are unfamiliar. They're difficult. They're not what we're used to. She breaks it down for us and puts it into everyday language so that we can understand what's actually going on. She connects the dots from what's happening in this one passage to maybe something that we've already read before or something that's coming up in the future so that we can put it all together and understand the overarching story of the Bible um, with just a little bit more help than reading it ourselves, all by ourselves. So here's our lesson structure for the year. First, um, before we read a new book of the Bible, we will read the overview in our Bible overview book. Then we will read the passage of the Bible as assigned each day. After you read your passage, you'll open the Juno pod for that assignment for that passage and we'll watch the recap video and then answer the questions that follow. Those are graded questions. They are important. So you are going to need to um, open your Juno pod And answer those because that is where your grade comes from. That's where 80% of your grade comes from. Then you're going to be given a journal assignment at the end of the Juno pod. And you will use those questions to write what you need to write in your journal. And then also to 
write any questions that you have for class in the journal as well. So let's talk about grades. I mentioned it just a moment ago. 80% of your grade is coming from the genopods. These genopods all have correct answers. Every question has a correct answer that can be graded. Any questions that are like, what did you learn from? Or where did you see God's character? Or what did you learn about your own? Those types of questions are for your journal. I will not be grading. Those are your questions. And those are your responses and they are for your personal growth. So I'm not going to be grading those responses in your, in your journal. I will be grading the fact that you have a journal and that you brought it to class. But 80% of your grade comes from the Junopod answers and you can find the correct answer. Now, each Junopod can only be submitted once. You cannot redo it. You can save it for later and come back to it. But once you submit it, that's it. There's no do-overs. We're doing one a day and that's it. 20% of your grade is from participation. That means bring your journal to class. If you don't bring it, we deduct points. If you have a bad attitude, we deduct points. If you are disrespectful to myself or any other student, we deduct points. However, we can add points for good behavior, encouraging behavior, support and respect and engagement in the topic, um, positivity inside and outside of class um, will result in points being added to your participation grade. And we will not have any tests whatsoever. Not a midterm, not a semester exam, not a final, no quizzes, nothing like that at all. Woohoo! No, no tests, no tests. I can't, I'm excited about no tests. That's awesome. So if you would like some additional resources to dig deeper into what you're reading, these are the ones that I recommend. Blueletterbible.org is a Hebrew and Greek lexicon. If you don't have a Bible and you don't want to download the Hernando Baptist app, this is a website where you can actually just look up the passage. Now, I don't think it reads it to you, but you can read it for yourself. TheBibleProject.com has lots of video series and articles. So if you have a question during the week that you want an answer for and you don't want to wait for Thursday, you can go to BibleProject.com and type in the keywords of your question and it may have an article that answers that question for you. Bible.FaithLife.com is, if you, it's a free Bible resource. And if you don't have an account with them, it's a free account. There's no hidden charges. If you don't have an account, then it will just allow you to read the Bible, whatever passage you want to read. If you do create a free account, then you can also access Bible commentaries and other study materials that are related to whatever passage you are pulling up. So it is another great resource that you could use also. But the most important part, before you begin each assignment, pray. Before you read the passage in the Bible, pray about it. Ask God to give you the wisdom and knowledge and understanding that that passage provides. Ask him to let any knowledge you gain serve to help you love him more and those around you. And not to let it make you be prideful because you've obtained the knowledge that the Bible has, um, but just so that it can be put to use. Ask God to help you see something new about him that you've never seen before. Ask him to correct any lies that you've believed about God or anything that you've misunderstood about the Bible. If we don't ask to see those corrections, if we don't seek to be teachable and to see where maybe we misunderstood something, then we're always going to have a misconception there that isn't a true picture of who God is. And when we don't have a true picture of who God is, we can't love him the way that he ought to be loved. It, it creates a barrier. And then ask God to direct your steps according to his word. Ask him to help you apply what you understand about the passage or about who he is or about how he loves or whatever the passage is about to your life. Ask for the way that you need to do that. I promise if you pray about each lesson each day, 
that you will get more out of it than just opening up and reading it like a book. So remember, first, pray each day before your assignment for wisdom, correction, guidance, and understanding. Read your assigned passage every day, yes, even the weekends, and then respond by completing the assigned Junopod and writing in your journal notebook. And that's all that I wanted to talk to you about before we begin class. I'm excited about this year. I'm excited about getting to know you and to dig into the word of God and to talk about its significance and its importance in our lives and how we need to respond to the things that are in, in, enclosed in his word. Um, I want so much and I pray for you for this next year so much um, that you will see that he is where the joy is.